Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Virtual Security Showcase. This session will be recorded. If you have questions for the presenter, please enter them in the GoToWebinar control box under the Questions tab. All questions will be captured and forwarded to the presenters. If we have time at the end of the session, we will address some questions at that time. This session is from Silox, entitled, How a Layered Security Approach Works Best to Limit Vulnerabilities and Improve Overall Safety and Security. Today's session will be presented by Karen Evans, CEO and President of Silox. And I welcome Karen to begin the session. Thank you, Kevin. Let me tell you a little bit about Silox. We are we have been a security products manufacturer for we have been a security products manufacturer now for 41 years. We do all of our own design development in-house. And believe it or not, we do all of our electronic manufacturing actually here in New Jersey, where we're headquartered. So we're very, very proud to say that we truly are a USA made company. We are also on a number of different contract vehicles, uh, making our products available for those that are in the K-12 market, higher ed, government, state, local, as well as nonprofit agencies. As we know that all schools and businesses are completely different. There's really a no one size fits all when you're looking at a security layered solution for your building or for your campus. Your plans and your procedures must really reflect the differences in the design, the size, the location, uh, as well as how your local community responders uh, can react and respond to any situation uh, where they're needed. Planning, planning is absolutely key to anything that you're doing in a security layer. Your security layers are gonna work best really after you do a full vulnerability or risk assessment and know what you're dealing with. What are your risks with any hazard or any threat? Who or what are you trying to protect? Who or where are you trying to control? And who or when really needs to know? What is your plan for any of the hazards? Are they natural hazards or, or human hazards? Whether they be weather threats or warnings, bomb threats, intruder or active shooter, uh, disturbance or fighting or something like that within a school, missing individuals, uh, or even now pandemics. Who knows your plans and are they really effective? Do you have documented instructions and procedures that you've handed out to everyone? Where are those plans stored? Are they readily accessible? Have they been updated and changed as your needs or your requirements change? How frequently, how frequently are you doing training with your staff? What do you do when you have a new staff member or a temporary staff member? Uh, do you have a plan in, in place to get them up to speed? Do your local responders understand your plans and procedures? Are they involved in your drills so you're all in sync? or are your plans or procedures in conflict with the responders? There are a lot of crisis management plans that have been introduced over the years uh, with different tragedies that have occurred out there, starting with FEMA uh, almost 20 years ago after the, after the Columbine tragedy. And after that, some of these other procedures have come into place, whether you should uh, run, hide, fight, or lockdown, lights out, out of sight type of procedures, a lot of different procedures, and you can incorporate some of these different procedures and plans into your environment. There are a lot of technologies on the market that can be incorporated into your layers. Uh, these list, this list has grown over time as needs and, and uh, risks have changed, whether it be sound and paging or notifications or metal detectors or panic buttons, uh, access control and wireless locks, more recently, more layers have been things like vape detectors uh, or temperature sensors have been more recent and uh, very frequently being asked um, to be priced up and designed into uh, a layered solution. No matter what layers that you have, experts are going to agree, no matter what technology you have, experts are going to agree that layering is critical you should really be incorporating as many layers as you can, as many multiple technologies as you can, 
Uh, cost is going to be a factor on that. Um, it's not inexpensive to add, continue to add layers, but look at the layers where you can get the biggest bang for your buck and be able to grow into it or migrate into it uh, so that you can grow with it as your needs and uh, requirements change. And one of the most important things in all of your layers is communications. Communications has been one of the missing links in a lot of the major incidents that have, that have occurred. That has been the critical breakdown is the ability to communicate quickly and effectively to everyone. What are you doing in, with any of your hazards? If you have a tornado threat in the area, how quickly can you get everyone to shelter? And there are a number of different layers that are effective in that type of environment. What do you do if you have a bomb threat or chemical spill? Can again, you get everybody alerted quickly and uh, here are some of the other layers that are very, very effective in uh, a bomb threat or chemical spill situation. What do you do if you have a medical situation? How quickly can you notify on-site on -site medical staff or your community EMS? What do you do if you have an active shooter? This is really bringing in all of your layers. I could have taken all the different technologies from that previous page and put it here, but because uh, they, they really, all of them can come into play. You should be looking at all of these uh, as part of your layering system for your best uh, solution moving forward. Keep in mind that adding layers over time is going to be your most effective way to do it, mainly because of price. So add the layers in where you're going to get the biggest impact on that. Uh, at Silox, we've been adding layers to our access control system over the years, whether it was photo ID badging or visitor management, uh, video integration, uh, more recently, over the last few years, the biggest integrations that we've seen in the addition of layers to the system is wireless locks. Rather than just securing the perimeter uh, doors and maybe some critical interior doors, maybe even at the perimeter gates, wireless locks has been a big layer that has been added to get into the classroom doors, the office doors, the mechanical rooms, the telephone closets, and all the other doors that you may not have done in the past because they were too cross prohibitive but the wireless locks have become uh, very, very cost effective over the years and have become a major piece in the layering of solutions. We have done some very serious and very deep integrations with the two major worldwide lock manufacturers, both uh, Allegiant with their Schlage and Von Duprin lines and ASA with their entire Aperio line. Uh, so very, very tight integration to start bringing all of those types of solutions in, whether you're trying to uh, protect interior classrooms or offices, or you're looking at server racks and not just the server room, uh, or cabinet locks for your drug rooms, your evidence lockers, or things of that sort, or you're even trying to remotely undog a Von Duprin crash bar literally in seconds without having to have someone uh, walk around and undog and secure these doors in an emergency, potentially walking into uh, harm's way. We've also done some other unique things with these integrations. Um, we, on both of the block manufacturers, we support two-man rule, where you want two different valid card holders uh, to be using their card in five seconds or less to grant access through that door, just like you would have done with a hardwired door. Uh, we give you the ability to toggle the lock. Uh, you've removed the, the mechanical key from the individual, uh, and now if they want to take control of their lock, you're often calling admin to put the door into a locked or an unlocked state if you've got them on schedules. Well, we put that capability back into their hands, allowing them to toggle their own lock with their own access control card. Uh, and we keep an audit trail of that. Uh, we also have a very unique feature in the solution called NMAN, um, often used for parking applications and things of that sort, but maybe you wanna use something like this to limit the number of people uh, that you want to have in a particular area uh, while this pandemic is going on. There's some extreme benefits to wireless locks. There's no wiring to the doors, uh, so it's extremely cost effective. Uh, you don't lose any capabilities. You still get access granted, access denied, schedules, door forced open, door held open, and integration to all the other uh, uh, third-party products that might be tied to the system whether you're triggering lights or buzzers or other things based on uh, events that are occurring at these particular doors. Uh, and the cost of these, in some cases, is one half to one third the cost that it would be uh, to a traditional hardwired door. 
Uh, at Silox, uh, we've introduced a newer technology to the market a few years ago uh, that I'm going to go into a lot of detail. But before I do, um, I want to tell you about Dade County Schools. They are one of our more recent deployments. Uh, they were interviewed by the Chattanooga TV station, which is just north of them. Um, and they uh, are talking about how they added this solution uh, as another layer into their deployments. the Dade County school system, a communications company is now working with the safety personnel to use technology to reduce response time in the event of a crisis. News Wells' Ashley Henderson has the details. The parents told us they wanted to have a, an SRO at every school. We've done that. And um, they wanted to have top level security in every school. And so we started investigating immediately on ways to enhance, you know, the safety at our schools. Superintendent Jan Harris said in a morning news conference that technology will combine existing programs with something new. We are excited to have it in place and not only have it in place, but to have it paid for with a grant written by Tommy Bradford. Major Tommy Bradford, you'll recall, is the Dade County Sheriff's officer who was critically hurt and lost part of his leg while stopping a speeding suspect last August. That grant was for $160,000. The district linked with South Southwestern Communications to create a program that will ensure faster response to danger. It's an alert system that is seen by all important agencies. Police are given a, a heat map, basically, so if, you know, there was an incident, uh, the rooms turn red if, if they're, you know, say here shots fired or something horrific like that. Um, but then the areas of the building that are green, they know that, that there's nothing currently going on right there, so they can concentrate their focus. Um, so it's kind of like having an x-ray view of what's going on inside the school. This is a cold Red it's uh, it's helped our SROs uh, with a quicker response time and even our officers on the road. So it's a uh, it's a great tool for law enforcement. It gives us a way for know where the issue is or where it can be and try not to come in the wrong way to a school to help that situation. That program is already in place in Dade County. Ashley Henderson, News 12 Now. So about eight years ago, I was part of a meeting regarding K-12 security in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And during that meeting, I was introduced to the FEMA procedures known as red-green lockdown, where you, they're in a lockdown situation. Uh, they alert the faculty or staff. They then take a color card and slide it under their door, indicating green if they're safe or red if they need response. And I heard this description of this procedure and was shocked by it and came back to my office the following week. And with my team of engineers and product manager, we decided to whiteboard and how we could eliminate the manual procedures of red green and automate that process and make it safer for faculty, staff, students, as well as responders. And these were all the uh, requirements that we came up with. We wanted something that was cost effective. We wanted something easy to deploy. We wanted it to be simple to use. We wanted it to be used for more than just lockdown so it could get used for everyday incidents and hazards. We wanted to dramatically reduce the time that it takes to notify. We wanted it to be able to adapt to anyone's procedures and not force changes to the procedures. We wanted to take advantage of all the existing infrastructure so we could potentially deploy without cables being pulled. We wanted instant visibility to the responders. We wanted no visibility to the intruder or the active shooter. We wanted to come up with a way to communicate during any situation so that we could be able to push out instructions or information or be able to gather anything uh, from the initiators that could help us with our decisions and our deployment. And when it was all said and done, we wanted an audit trail so we could recreate the entire sequence of events. Uh, after we figured out how we could solve each and every one of these, we decided to move forward with a solution. Uh, we didn't start with two colors. We started with five. We added orange for bullying, disturbance. We added blue for medical. We added yellow for a missing individual. And we designed it so that it was browser-based. It could be on an embedded appliance. 
uh, desktop or rack. We wanted it to be a site deployment so you could take advantage of not only WAN and LAN communications, but Wi-Fi as well as high speed and any device, desktops, laptops, tablets, smartphones, as long as your device could access a URL and you were given the appropriate login name and password, uh, any device could be used. And because it's a site deployment, there are no ongoing hosting or licensing fees. There's three main operators in the system, initiators or faculty, staff, employees that could signal the status of their area, responders, anyone designated that can be receiving this, and admin, anyone that's going to be managing it. There's five alert levels in the system. All clear, hopefully it's always that. Lockdown, because you want everyone to secure themselves in offices or classrooms. Evac, because you've got a bomb threat or chemical spill and you want to go uh, down to your gathering or mustering points. Uh, shelter, because you've got a weather threat or warning going on and you want to go to predefined shelter locations. And lockdown. Lockdown is a community incident. Maybe it's a high speed chase, a bank robbery, something's going on in town. Stay inside, the perimeter's secure. So get off the, the ball fields, the playground, the parking until the community responders have whatever they're doing under control. I mentioned that we started with five colors. Um, our earliest deployments thought that was too many, and uh, we started them with two, the red and green, and then they added more. So they started using it for medical or for fights or bullying. And before we knew it, they told us we didn't have enough. They're now using it for homeroom check-ins, so they're touching it every day. They're using it for maintenance. They're using it for parents that might uh, have a restraining order or a custody situation. Uh, so they're using it for everything. The labels are conf completely configurable for whatever condition you need to know is coming from any particular location. So you can configure to use all eight or anywhere from one to eight of those. And even though we designed this for schools initially, uh, it is now deployed. It is now deployed in some other applications. And uh, here's some samples of different vertical markets. Uh, so it's extremely flexible to be used really in just about every vertical market out there. Your initiators would be able to receive email and text alerts, audibles, push instructions to them. They would be able to check in with their status and communicate or chat with your responders. So we're pushing a lot of information and allowing them to also communicate back. Uh, the initiators also have the ability um, to put the building into lockdown if you want to give them that capability and not just on the responder side. So it is a permission based function that you can give the initiators to actually trigger lockdown and reduce the time window now down to a single second. So nobody has to pick up the phone and make phone calls. Your responders have a lot of different screens available to them. They can be getting emails and text alerts. They could be getting pop up. They could be being fed video. They could be uh, looking at an event viewer. Uh, they might be getting information from motion sensors going active or panic buttons getting triggered in addition to anything going on within the system. We're tracking all this in real time on an event viewer, but the most important thing is we're, we're keeping uh, a real-time dynamic map updated with, this, with the status check-in of every single location, what their condition is, and any locations that have been checked in. These archives, these events are being pushed to the appliance for archive purpose, but they're also there for uh, real-time event viewing. Uh, they can be filtered during any incident. So depending on your responsibilities, you could be viewing just those events and not all the events that are coming in. And this is the same way you would do your audit trail timeline recreation at the end. Responders, any device, doesn't matter to us what the device is. They have real-time visibility of the status of every location. They could be looking at multiple screens, depending on the size of their device. I'm a teacher now, I'm teaching, there's an announcement going out, it's breaking through my screen, and now I'm gonna be a responder receiving this information through, and you'll see that everyone is starting to check in. The music room on the far right checked in green, they're gonna escalate and go yellow because they're missing at least one individual. They're gonna escalate again and go red because they think that they have a bigger problem out there. 301 in the top center hasn't checked in yet. They might be out on a field trip today and we're not expecting them to check in or 301 might be one of the first places of dispatch because we know it's an occupied room and they never got a signal out. Now we're back at a command center. We support 
numerous command centers in the same system with no added driver or licensing fees for the on-site or community responders. You could be looking at multiple floors, multiple buildings, two-way chatting. You could be clearing locations. You could be getting video or anything else that's relevant that can help you assess and deploy. Typical layout doesn't require any cables. Use everything that you already have. Or maybe we add one of our controllers to the deployment because you want optional initiating devices, whether they be panic buttons or gunshot detection or motion sensors or anything else that could trigger a signal uh, that could alert someone. Or maybe one of our controllers gets added because you want to tie to all your existing layers. Uh, if you have the ability to do a pre-programmed announcement on your PA system, we could be triggering those pre-programmed announcements for you to take any kind of uh, manual uh, function out of the equation when somebody's under duress uh, and trying to get a message out clearly. Or maybe you want to timestamp your video or real-time record it or pop it on your video management wall. Or maybe you want to lock down your access control doors, whether they're wired or wireless. Uh, or if you have hearing impaired or noisy environments where you don't, uh, you can't hear these messages, maybe you would be triggering color-coded strobes uh, for the various alert levels, uh, indicating to someone that they need to be doing something, even though they can't hear these announcements or don't have their phone with them and didn't get the text, there's a visual display for them. How we tie all of this together, uh, the class system starts on the left side and maybe it's tied to inputs, whether they be motion or gunshot or panic buttons, maybe we're triggering outputs to take control of locks and video and strobes and other things. Um, and then we're adding our controller and we're integrating it maybe with our own access control system or someone else's system. And now we're tying in locks and all kinds of other things uh, that are all fully integrated, uh, tying all of your layers together. So your law enforcement or any responders are not blind. They really get what is known as critical situational awareness. It's instant information. So they can assess and deploy or even redeploy if they're getting updated chat information or updated color changes if a situation starts to change or evolve on them. Uh, here's a sampling of some of the hundreds of schools that are using our system around the country. Uh, we're not just in the school market. We are also in uh, courthouses, we are in homeless shelters, so it is being in, in municipalities. It's being used in a lot of other areas besides where it was originally designed. Uh, Catoosa County is a school district that deployed one as a test, uh, and then they decided to deploy it in all 16 of their schools. Um, and this is a um, video from the uh, local TV station that did interviews with the school district on how they were protecting their, their students uh, in Katusa. feel safe sending your kids to school? That's a question on the top of nearly every parent's mind tonight. I'm Josh Rowe. And I'm Kim Chapman. Those lingering concerns after gunmen opened fire at a Florida high school killing 17 people. But tonight, one school district in our area says they've made changes that will give parents peace of mind. That's right. Uh, since the shooting, uh, schools across the Tennessee Valley have been seeing copycat threats. In the past week, officers charged nine students for threatening social media posts. Three of those arrests happened at schools here in Catoosa County. Catherine Marchand shows us how their new system could save a student's life with the touch of a screen, no matter the emergency. Creek. Could you please hold your photo ID about two inches away from the screen? This is the first line of defense at Tiger Creek Elementary to make sure that people who shouldn't be inside aren't. And a new system will make sure that if they do get inside, law enforcement will know immediately. Kyle Johnson can't keep an eye on his third grader at all times. We worried to death about what could happen. But there's one place he feels she'll be safe. Tiger Creek, I send my daughter to and I don't worry. I, I don't worry about her, her, her here at this school. Tiger Creek Elementary is the first school in Catoosa County and all of Northwest Georgia to test out a high-tech security system called Silox. It starts with a color-coded map of the school that teachers can change from their computer, cell phone, or iPad. If it's an imminent danger or if it's a medical emergency or if it's just they're outside the building at the playground, we will know based 
based on what the color is on the screen. Sidewalks give school officials like Principal Beard and the Catoosa County Sheriff's Office a real time look at what's going on inside the school. Take a look at this screen. You can see that the cafeteria is pink right now, but if a child were choking and we needed to trigger a medical alert, it would turn blue and the Sheriff's Office can see it on any electronic device. The system even tracks movement, so in an active shooter situation, officers could monitor people walking down the halls. Lead school resource officer Kenneth Hooten says Psylock shows the Catoosa County Sheriff's Office exactly where to respond, saving valuable time. The quickest response is the best response. And letting parents know their children will be protected. What just happened in Florida? You know, granted it was a high school, but same things happen in elementary schools. And here I don't worry about it. My daughter is safe. Catherine Marchand, News Channel 9. The system has been already installed in every Catoosa County school. Administrators are hoping to have it up and running by the beginning of next year. So let's recap this. Uh, class is not hosted. It's an on-site deployment without any ongoing hosting or licensing fees. It's extremely cost-effective. Uh, it's based on the number of physical rooms or locations that you need to know the condition of. It can be used for everyday incidents and hazards so everyone can get really what's known as muscle memory uh, since they got used to touching it every day that if they ever need to use it in a real emergency, they won't think about won't have to think about what to do because uh, they got used to it. It reduces notification time to everyone to a single second. It eliminates all visibility to an intruder or active shooter. It easily adapts, actually really can enhance your operating procedures. It's completely configurable on the color labels and the alert level labels. Uh, you can push out instructions, evacuation plans, anything else that's relevant. Maybe it's run, hide, fight, or Alice instructions. Uh, it could become a common uh, communications platform. Maybe the local authorities are trained in the system, but you might have a situation that warrants the dispatch of the state or the federal to the scene. You can share the URL with them locally or remotely and let them all on the same platform. It easily integrates with all your existing infrastructure, all your other layers, uh, so it can tie all your layers together. Uh, and at the end, you end up with an audit trail, so you can recreate the entire sequence of events in a matter of minutes or even seconds. Uh, based on who, what, when, where, including all of the chat messaging in the sequence. So your layered security technologies, when they're deployed, if you are really using an extremely well thought out plan with continuous training, and I can't emphasize how key training is, uh, and you've implemented with a top down commitment of all of your stakeholders, that is going to be the key to your success. Now, I think I have a little bit of time before we go into Q&A, so I want to show you real quickly a, um, a live demo of the system. So on the left side of my screen, I have a the floor plans up. On the right side of my screen, I have a chat window up for a responder. And then the bottom right, I have a initiator screen, which would be a faculty member or an employee or something like that. I do have some participants that are uh, out there already logged in with me. Uh, and right now we're in an all clear state. Uh, we don't have a weather threat coming into Jersey here right now, but I'm going to assume we are. When I click on the tornado button on the far left, that is getting pushed out to everyone that's active right now, literally in a second, and you'll see it update my screens on the right. So we just went into tornado mode. We might have a community incident going on right now, so I'm going to hit soft lock. Maybe that's what you call it, or maybe it would be called containment or lockout or whatever you might want to call it. Um, I'm going to put us into a lockdown now, and when I put us into a lockdown, I'm going to push instructions on the right side of the screen for the employee, and on the left side of the screen, I'm going to pull a video feed in. So lockdown, here's a video coming in on the left. Um, that is a lake uh, out there somewhere, and now I'm getting the instructions pushed to the um, employee on the right on what they should be doing right now in this particular situation. And I happen to be located 
uh, here in the in the uh, gym right now. I might need assistance, so I'm checking in red. Maybe I just did a head count and I'm missing someone. Up here as a responder, I'm sending out a password. So today's password is uh, Silox. Do not unlock your door for any officer unless they use the Silox password. And the Silox password just got pushed to all responders and all initiators. Um, or maybe I'm telling a specific individual to exit door B, and I'm not going to send this one to everyone. I'm only going to send this one to the gym that's on the bottom of my screen here. So the gym just got the instructions to exit out uh, door B. Uh, I'm going to assume that uh, we're going to go back to an all clear state right now. I'm going to send up to four signals that we're going to go all clear. Uh, the first one I'm sending is the all clear icon. Uh, the second signal that I'm going to send is an all clear chat message. The third signal that I'm going to send is I'm going to re I'm going to remove the checkbox off of everyone's screen. So I'm going to I could do this room by room, but I'm going to clear the entire map all in one shot. And we just now went to an all clear state there. And the final signal is I'm going to clear chat off everyone. We're back to normal operations. And finally, just to give you an idea how we're tracking all of this information on the events, I want to see right now. I want to see all of my red signals, or maybe I want to do an advanced search and I want to see all of my chat messages that had any reference to a gun in room four. And I just, there we go, in room four, or maybe I wanted it in just the gym. So that quickly you're filtering out and getting all this information I know we, uh, I can't have you participate in this, but if you want to participate in a, in a demo like this, we can uh, and do uh, other demos on a schedule that are available. Um, you can go on our webpage to schedule another demo. You can email us uh, any questions uh, if you think of things beyond today. Uh, but I want to thank everyone uh, for your time today. See if you have any questions that we can answer. Um, and stay safe and healthy out there. Thank you, Karen, for the very informative presentation and the live demonstration as well. Um, we've got a couple of questions that we can address now. Um, we noticed uh, some of the listeners have existing access control systems, and they wonder if they can add the Silox class and integrate it with that existing control system in order to enable a lockdown function? Uh, great question, Kevin. Um, and the answer to that question most of the time is yes. Most access control manufacturers uh, have as part of their solution the ability to hardwire, say, a panic button into one of the uh, controllers that are part of that system. If they can hardwire a panic button into a controller and that can be that can trigger things, then we could take uh, an output off of one of our control panels that gets wired into the input switch of whatever access control manufacturer that they're using, and then program that connection to do a lockdown of their doors. I see. So even a system's capability, you're able to with them. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. And then, of course, a newer system, or if you're going to install a new system, it can be done at that time as well. Correct. Yeah. Okay. There, you also showed a connection to the responders system, and I think there were some pictures of uh, police uh, cars and so forth seeing those. Is there, is there a limit to uh, how many responder workstations are integrated in that system? Well, we have a number of different sizes for class. Uh, vary in sizes based on the number of locations that you want to manage and monitor and uh, know the condition of. Our smallest system supports up to 40 concurrent command centers. That, that could be in dispatch or 911. It could be in the security office. It could be in a patrol vehicle. It could be uh, at somebody's desktop. So you could have on our smallest system up to 40 concurrent. On our larger systems, you could have up to 150 concurrent responder stations viewing this. So you could engage local EMS 
community police and fire uh, and any of your on-site responders from the nurse to security to um, facilities or anybody else that's involved in the system as a responder. Oh, wow. And and for that to work, do you have to load some software onto those devices in advance across that, that community? No, the only place that the software actually gets loaded is on the appliance uh, that would be on site. Um, and then it's a URL. So they would, they would be, everyone would be given a URL. They would be given a login name and password. They could save that URL as a favorite, put it on their desktop as an icon, or even put it in the startup menu. So anytime they turn their device on, they could be automatically uh, launched and browsed right into the system, waiting for any alert signals or text messages or anything coming through that they need to be aware of. Hmm. Oh, I see. So you, it looks like you have a number of successful deployments across different kinds of, of situations. Um, if if I was uh, thinking about a school situation or a school uh, district situation, um, how did you go about the training to make sure everyone got the right training? Well, we sell our solutions through uh, an authorized integrator um, network of partners. Most times our integrators are doing that training. Sometimes we assist them with the training uh, if they if they want us to be involved in that. Uh, and it's been handled in a number of different ways. In some cases, the, the schools or businesses have taken ownership of it and they've done a train the trainer and then they've trained all their own people. In other cases, uh, they have wanted to have the training done by our integrator and they'll go in and do different training classes for their initiators uh, their on-site responders, their community responders. The real key to any of this is to get the buy-in and get everybody trained uh, so they get comfortable with it. Uh, and then it becomes a very, very effective solution for them. But so there's a number of different um, types of different training ways. that can be done depending on uh, the needs of the uh, business or the school. Okay, and you made an important point, which is when you deploy it in a, such a way that it's used on a daily basis, that really reinforces the app, you know, that people are ready to use it in the case of an emergency. Exactly. We actually had a school that deployed it and there was a real pushback by the faculty that it was one more thing that they had to do, but they, they were using it and they, they asked them to use it for homeroom check-in every morning. And several months after they deployed it, they had a situation arise in a classroom and the teacher previously would have picked up the phone to call for help. She hit orange on her screen and the security resource officer and the principal uh, were in their room in less than 30 seconds and escorted the students out. And by the end of the day, the school was buzzing. All the students thought cameras were now in the classrooms because they never saw the <laughs> teacher do anything and how could they know? And, and the whole faculty, was talking in the faculty room saying, let's use this every hour so they know we're in the classrooms and not just for the homeroom check-in. So they went from once a day to eight times a day. Um, so they're actively using it and they're very comfortable with it. Wow, that sounds like a success story. Well, here's another success story. What one, uh, one of the audience members is aware of a deployment that they're very, very happy with. And he, he's asking the question, uh, he heard that you're working on the next gen uh, class 2.0. And uh, did you want to give any preview or comment about that? Well, I can't do a preview of it, but we're adding some exciting new features to it where not only would you be able to chat individually with someone, but you'd be able to chat with everybody in the same color. Um, a better better layering on the map so there is some exciting new features coming out on uh, on our next gen well that's something for us all to look forward to then another webinar perhaps so did you have any closing thought karen uh, i just wanted to say thank you everyone for your time today um again we're available to do private webinars or join us on any of our public webinars shoot us questions if you have them um, we look forward to helping you in the future uh, add a new layer into your approach to uh, help protect all of your employees and your property. Thanks so much. Uh, well, this is going to end today's session for Silox. Uh, thanks to all the audience for joining us. We appreciate your attendance. And if you're going to be attending another session, uh, please use your registration link to join that session. Um, and as Karen said, let's all be safe and enjoy the rest of your day.
Thank you and goodbye.